TSSF Good morning, everyone. It is 8.56 a.m. on a Saturday morning, uh, and I am recording a new tutorial video. This one is going to be about doing splits and instrument, uh, multi-sampled instruments. It's going to be pretty much the same as how I showed you how to do the drum kits. And the, the concept is that you're just going to be changing, um, changing low key and high key. So basically, I'll show you really quick on how to do it. So I have a sine wave as my first sample and an emu string, although most well known as this, uh, what's it called? The uh, Zelda strings. Um, so I'm going to set it up. I'm not exactly sure which ones are which, so let's take a look. I'm going to drag this down. It'll show me. Okay, so... On the keyboard down here, middle C is going to be C4, so we'll keep it as B3. And then I'll just turn on my second layer, I'll set my second sample, and we'll go from B4, or C4 rather, to C9. Okay, so that's pretty much how you do an instrument split, you just... Easy to do, right? Um, so we're going to do the multi-sampled ones right now, and it's, it's going to be a little bit more complex, but pretty much the same concept. So let's go into our sample menu. I'm going to get rid of these strings, and I have the Kurzweil strings, which are pretty much the Emu Emulator 2 strings. Of course, we only have eight layers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we have... 16 sample slots, but I mean without going and doing some magic in the mod matrix You can only really have eight samples for this So I'm gonna keep sample one as the sine wave because I'm going to use that as a reference sound And I'm gonna check sample two uh, STR3 for now because layer one is gonna be STR2 uh, and How I'm going to do it is I have these strings set up in a sound font so that I can look at it. But the way they're sampled, they're all sampled to different sample rates, but they're also sampled like tuned to C. So they should all be in tune with each other. That way I don't have to fiddle with sample rates and, and things like that. Um, so let's, uh, well, I also have to, don't have to fiddle with courses too much as well. So let's take a look at the sound font. You won't be able to see it because I'm not gonna change my OBS scene, but. On STR3, I have it set up to C1 as STR3. STR2 is going to be everything below it. Um, but C1 might not be correct, so I think I'm just going to set it to C2 in this one. So I just reset the high key for the sine wave. STR3, let's start it at C2. I think C2 might be 26. Nope, that's way too low. So C2. My STR4 might be a little bit too high. So I wonder if I changed, or too low rather. I wonder if I changed that to 12. I don't know where my low, that low sound is coming from. Maybe it's here. Oh, it's only because the pitch is wrapping. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so my next note, STR4, I believe is going to start at, yeah, it starts at G, G1 in the sound font. So I'm going to make it start at G2 in the, in this thing. In chip synthesis FC2. Not chip synthesis FC2. <laughs> Sorry, it is nine o'clock now in in uh, on a Saturday morning here on October twenty fourth. So I don't know what I'm saying sometimes. Um, so this is forty three. So we'll make this forty two. I'm just gonna mute the sine wave for now. That's fine. 
So you can hear the sample change there. Um, actually, let's leave the sine wave gone for now. I'm going to change that to SDR2. I don't think I need the sine wave. The sine wave is good, though, if you're trying to make sure everything's in tune. So... 36, we'll make this 35, and then we'll just... That's good. Now, the next one, STR5, is going to start at D3, it looks like. So we'll make this one C sharp 3. One of these days, I'll learn the MIDI note numbers. Okay, so this will be 50. Okay, STR6 is going to be... Do, 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 it's going to be an A. So it's going to be A3. So this is going to stop at A flat 3. Good. And that's 56. Let's put this to 57. Good. Next one will be STR7, which starts at, it looks like B. No, it's not B. That's F. Okay, so that starts, actually it starts at E. So E4. It's close. Good. Oh, I got my numbers mixed up. See, this is the problem when you're working with sample numbers. <laughs> I always mess things up like that. Um, okay, so... STR3, let's, let's just double check some stuff. So STR3 starts at C2, that's good. STR4 starts at G2. Yep. STR5 starts at D. Okay, that was the one I was missing. And I got, well, I, maybe that wasn't the one I was missing. D. STR6 starts at A. Okay, that was the one I was missing. So I'm glad I'm making errors on, on while I'm recording. That way you guys can see how I fix them. That's good. Now, and as you can hear, this, this sample is the one that was used for Zelda. It's longer, though. STR7 is going to be used at, I think it was B, wasn't it? No, it was at E. Okay, so... It was 65, no, 64. So this will be 63. So as you can see, what I'm doing is all these notes are stopping one number before the next one starts. That way we don't have any overlaps. So we're changing that to 7. We're going to change this to 8. I believe STR7 is actually Final Fantasy 7 strings. Um, so it's not. I mean, Final Fantasy 7 did use these strings. But STR8 is actually Final Fantasy 7 strings. And they start at... That is a B. So B4... Good, and see, you can hear Final Fantasy strings right here. Okay, perfect. And then we got one more sample, which starts at, looks like, F sharp. And that's STR9. There's a couple other higher samples, but I can't fit them because I'm out of layers.
again, I probably could if I did some weird modulation stuff, but that's not what this, this episode is going to be about. So 77 and all the way up. So... Now we have our own Super Nintendo Rompler. Um, you can change, go into the sample menu, you can change the decimate. Maybe turn on pre-E for all the samples if you really want to. Me, I'm going to set the release to maybe five on each of them. Whoops. And just hear how that sounds. Perfect. Um, let's turn on some Final Fantasy reverb, or echo, I should say. FF4 regular. So there we have it. We have a multi-sampled string instrument. Um, I didn't mention this before, but when you're doing all this, you want to be in mono timbral mode, and you might want to set your poly to 8. There we have it. So we have an instrument from, from the Emu Emulator 2 strings slash Chris Vile strings. And um, yeah, we can use this for music if we want to. If you liked what you see, just hit me a like, subscribe if you want to see more. I've got a couple more stuff coming up. I think I'm going to, the next one's going to be showing you how the samples, how to make final, uh, sorry, just Super Nintendo style samples in general. Maybe I'll go into Super Mario World style samples, maybe Final Fantasy style samples. Um, and then after that, I think I might want to talk about mono timbral, or yeah, just mono timbral mode in general. It, that'll probably be a short video because, I mean, technically, you should know what mono timbral mode is. It's basically just playing all the layers at once instead of treating each layer like a MIDI channel. Um, so that's gonna that's gonna be it for now. So I guess we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys later. And if you have any questions, shoot me a question in the comments or follow me on Twitter. I'm at tssf. And yeah, see you guys later.